All right, I think we had a couple of more people hop on. We can get things going here. Uh, thank you for coming to our first Otter Lake Road open house meeting. My name is Alan Maxwell and I'm a project manager with Ramsey County Public Works. I'm here with uh, Nikki Farrington, project manager with SEH Engineering and Ramsey County's consultant on this project. We are here to talk about our upcoming plans for the reconstruction of Otter Lake Road from Highway 96 to 4th Street, and we are glad that you were able to attend. For those of you that are new to Microsoft Teams, the tools can be found in the upper right portion of your Teams window next to the red leave button. While we discuss the project, the microphones will be turned off and we would ask that if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box found in the tools bar, second to the left, as shown on the slide. And we will answer questions asked in the chat box following our presentation. Afterwards, we will open up the microphones for any additional questions that you may have. Ramsey County is planned for the reconstruction of Otter Lake Road as part of our five year transportation improvement plan. Our goal for the project is to correct the existing worn and torn pavement, replacing it with new pavement. We will also be adding sidewalk and a multi use trail along the roadway in keeping with Ramsey County's all ability transportation network to make our roadways more accept more accessible for all users. Uh, we have met as a project team with the city of White Bear Lake and the Vadness Lake Area Water Management Organization and the Birch Lake Improvements District to discuss options for the roadway improvements. And we will take a closer look at the alternatives that we considered later in this presentation. Over the winter, SEH was able to collect data along Otter Lake Road to aid in the development of our roadway co concepts. Currently, we are in our preliminary design phase and are looking for your input on alternatives that we have developed. Uh, in addition to the design features that will be included, we are also weighing the options based on their impacts to the surrounding area and the amount of right away we may need in order to uh, construct them. Our next step will be to choose a desired alternative and take a closer look at its design. Uh, we will be holding a second open house in June to share the results of the selection process and present the chosen alternatives. We afterwards we will enter our final design phase and this is where we will take a deeper look at the design and hash out all of the details. We will use this time to obtain any permits and easements required to construct the project and these is, easements are typically temporary and used to give the contractor room to build the project. After we have our permanent in place, we anticipate getting a contractor on board in April of 2024. Uh, this will be followed by our third open house meeting to discuss the construction impacts during the summer of 2024. To date, our project team has identified the following features to be included in our Otter Lake Road design. Uh, the project limits will begin at the concrete pavement near Highway 96 and to the intersection of 4th Street. Uh, sidewalk on either the west or east side of Otter Lake Road from Highway 96 to South Birch Lake Boulevard. A multi-use trail on the west or east side of Otter Lake Road from South Birch Lake Boulevard to 4th Street. A school crossing at Birch Lake Avenue. Increased accessibility and safety at the intersection of Otter Lake Road and 4th Street. And stormwater improvements along Birch Lake. And now Nikki will take a closer look at the alternatives we've prepared to address these project goals. Thanks, Alan. Uh, welcome everyone. As Alan mentioned, uh, the project will be adding a 10 foot trail along the roadway. Um, so the current roadway design as proposed here will be two 11 foot travel lanes, 
a six foot of grass boulevard space and then the 10 foot trail. And so as you can see on some of these images here on the screen right now, uh, the, the total width of it is about 46 feet. Um, and so that configuration should fit well within the county 66 feet of right of way that they have. Uh, two options that are being considered for the trail location um, is either on the lake side or on the home side. And so the project team has spent a little time looking at the advantages and disadvantages of each, and we'll share a little bit about that with you tonight. When we look at the home side of the road or the east side of the road, uh, one disadvantage is having the trail cross multiple driveways, which would create you know, potential for cars and pedestrians to have conflicts as people are entering and leaving their driveways. Um, an advantage of the home side though, is um, that students that are uh, making their way to uh, the this elementary school at Birch Lake Road um, wouldn't have to actually cross Otter Lake. It would be on the right side of the road with the with the school. Uh, when considering the lake side of the road, uh, one advantage is the continuation of the current trail. So on both the north and south side of the lakes on uh, Birch Lake Boulevards, uh, you know, they're both on that lake side of the road, so we wouldn't require people to have to cross over the roads. It would be a continuation of those two and connecting those two trails. Um, and there may be so, and of course, being on the scenic side uh, of the lake side obviously is a benefit as well. You know, the project team is still working on determining the placement of the roadway within the county's right of way. So one thing I just want to note, you know, and we're, we're going to ask you kind of for your preference here and and you know, use the chat box to share. Um, but the idea is that we'll probably be shifting the roadway. So just because if you pick the lakeside, it doesn't mean that we're going to start on that existing shoulder and expand outwards. We'll probably have to shift the road. We're rebuilding the whole road itself anyways, and so we'll try to center this in the county's right of way. Um, so just something to keep in mind, you know, we're not going to be increasing impacts on one side or the other. We're still figuring out where the road's going to fit within that right of way. So with that, we're hoping the few of you that are on the line here tonight, um, if you want to go into the chat box, you know, if you have a preference and you want to share with us, um, you know, do you prefer the trail being on the lakeside, which is what uh, we've heard previously from some of the other members of our uh, project management team as a preference, or do you think that we should be considering the home side and, and um, just share your thoughts? So we're going to give a few minutes just here. Uh, people can use the chat. Again, if you are just getting on, if you look at the top of your uh, screen here, there should be a, a little bubble on the side that allows you to create a chat. And like I said, what we're looking for right now is, you know, do you have a preference of the trail that will go uh, again um, between Birch Lake to the north and, and connecting to uh, or Birch Lake south on the north south side up to Birch Lake north on the north side? Quiet group. I don't see anything in the chat yet, so I don't know if anyone. Uh, so we do. Share. We have two comments, Nikki. Oh, perfect. Uh, Ted and Deb uh, said that they prefer the lakeside, and then Vanessa mentioned I would prefer on the lakeside, but do have some logistic questions. Sure. Okay. We will open up for questions here at the end, Vanessa. So if we don't cover them here in our presentation, that you'll have a chance here. Just a, a, another five minutes here to present some things, and then we'll open it up for discussion. So thank you for sharing that everyone. So again, I hearing a, a lot of the lake, which is what we've been hearing to date. So appreciate that. One other thing we just wanted to share, you know, the project team is also be uh, looking at the fourth street intersection. Um, so while the current intersection of fourth street, you know, it's skewed. Um, I'm actually local. I drive this almost every day with a kid that two kids that go to middle school and, and the north campus. Uh, you know, so you everyone who drives it knows that tight curve you have to make to make the turn from northbound to eastbound. Um, however, uh, there is no crash history here and operationally it's working pretty well. And so one option that we want to consider is keeping the current geometry. Uh, however, adding some pedestrian amenities, uh, adding curb ramps, sidewalks around it. So it's a little bit more easy for pedestrian and bicyclists to use the interchange. 
Another option that was considered was realigning Otter Lake to help reduce the skew. And so you can see in this middle picture here, uh, it's showing that realignment. It would utilize uh, the northeast quadrant of the intersection and some of that land there. A couple things to note, however, that it would require kind of expensive replacement of equipment and a ponding area. So right now that space is used for stormwater retention and there's some expensive equipment that goes with that, that this uh, alignment would would go right through. So that's a, a, a disadvantage of that option. And again, we want to make sure we were considering everything. So another option that was considered was a roundabout. Um, you know, as you can see, this is a little bit of a unique design and, and it's not your typical circular roundabout. And that's because of the skew of the intersection uh, where those two legs of otter connect. And so you can see it's more of a peanut shape of a roundabout. Um, however, this does have impacts to almost every property around it. So the size of it, while it looks like it fits pretty well, it does have quite a few impacts kind of around each quadrant and in each parcel adjacent to it. So Again, the project team right now is considering keeping the existing configuration of the intersection, uh, but like I said, providing this better pedestrian and bicycle accommodations around the intersection. Um, it has the least amount of impact on the adjacent properties and it's expected to operate safely well into the future. So again, we're just going to pause, uh, see if anyone has any initial reactions to to that approach or if there's something else that you'd like to to talk about or consider, but for right now, if you want to just share, you know, could you support keeping the current intersection configuration, but adding the sidewalk and trail accommodations around the intersection? So if, if that's something that you could support, or if you um, have a preference for these other two options that were considered, um, you know, again, there's other things that were, were put into the consideration, including costs and like I said, right of way impacts. So um, just looking for feedback on that. So once again, we'll Adrian, if you could monitor the chat box, since I think since I'm presenting the screen here, it's not showing me that yeah, option. So. Some typing going on. Um, again, Vanessa mentioned I could see any of these configurations. Currently, I don't have a strong preference. Thank you, Vanessa, for your response. And then I can see uh, typing going on in the back, the little three dots. So some more responses are coming. Great, we'll just give them a, a second here. Another comment about uh, no, there not being a strong preference. Great. All right, well, that I just want to remind you that we are collecting this feedback. Um, so if you've got neighbors, um, this will this recording will actually be on the website here, too. So if anyone that you've talked to missed this presentation, there'll be a recording of this plus material up on the website. Um, we plan to come back. So right now we're gathering this feedback. We're going to be creating a layout. So hopefully uh, in June time frame, we can fingers crossed be meeting in person and Again, we would have more of the details of the design with a layout showing uh, location of the trail, uh, potential impacts to properties around it, um, really kind of where everything would fit within the environment. So uh, we plan on coming back in early summer to share the layout um, and the you know getting additional input on the design and function of the trail and other ele other elements of the design that we're working on. So stay tuned for that. And like I said, hopefully we'll see you in person. And I'm just going to kind of leave it open here. Um, I, I know that there were some people that had probably specific questions, but again, if you wanted to put in the chat, you know, what did, if you have any thoughts about the proposed improvements or if there's any other issues that you would like us to consider to be addressed as part of the project. Um, with that, I think the easiest thing to do is if you want to talk, just if you raise your hand, I should be able to unmute you and you can ask uh, questions. Yeah, and we did get another comment, Nikki. Uh, from Ted and Deb just mentioning that uh, the comment was don't mess with the new filter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, we, we are hearing that. Yeah, again, that equipment that was put in there is quite expensive, the lift station and stuff. So yeah, that, that was something we don't want to mess with. So appreciate that comment. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? 
like I said, you can either hit the little raise your hand button or I will unmute you, Vanessa. You have a question, so you should be able to unmute yourself and, and ask. Sarah, can you hear me? We can. Okay, great. Um, my husband is the one who has thought about this more than I have, so I'm just going to pull up because you can be on this call, what he was wondering. Okay, so he says, um, all right, so he had said that the initial proposed layout that he saw said that it would be two 11-foot lanes, paved shoulders, grass boulevards, and a mixed-use trail. Um, so some questions that he was curious about, and maybe this is something where you'll start diving into this more, and then June talked about it, but... He was wondering how much more land would this take above and beyond what's currently there that's paved? Um, and then would you be taking from lakeside or from the house side and like shifting the culvert and shifting the road? Um, for some of the lakeshore properties, they have like a, you know, they've got a fair amount of space that like if you went in 10 to 15 feet, they'd still have some lakeshore. But as you get closer to 4th Street, I don't think that there's quite as much um there's quite as much space there so just when you're starting to look at like a berm plus 11 foot lanes plus you know the trail and everything that could cut in quite a bit um and then if you're looking at putting it on the side of the homes um a few of those houses like ours included has um you know a culvert there that i guess would have to be shifted so just curious about that making sure that the lake sides are still usable for the houses that live there um and then let me see here the other maybe, questions. Maybe can you hold your other questions? Should we answer that one first and then? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, like I said, I think you're, so again, I pulled up the the um, the image here of the cross sections. And so like I said, and, and maybe Alan, you can do the quick math, what the existing cross section is with shoulders and everything. But so what we're proposing is 46 feet. I think existing it's 12 and 12 and six foot shoulders. So that'd be... This is what currently is there? Right. So it's two I believe foot what's lanes. currently there is a uh, two 12 foot lanes and two five foot shoulders. And then you go into your grassy area and it looks like that our right away in that area is currently 66 feet. And so what we're what we're looking to do with this reconstruction is to recenter this uh, proposed alignment in that right of way. And so we're not going to be keeping the keeping the exact road where it is and adding 16 feet of boulevard and trail onto one side. We're going to look to shift the whole um, layout into the center of it so that we're impacting less on either side. Um, but whether or not we'll take more from the house side or the lake side, that's going to be depend on how close the lake gets to the roadway and whether or not we're looking to have our our trail on one side versus the other because we're going to need to tie it back with grading and um, depending mm -hmm. on the slopes in the existing yard that could vary but uh, okay. yeah that's a good question and I just so you'll make know. sure for quality of the lake and also for just like that shore area that somebody has space for for what they currently own Right. Yep. And that's where we're going to try to, you know, thread the needle through here and make sure and we understand that desire to, to kind of keep that shoreline as much as possible there today. So another thing I just wanted to mention, you know, you, you had talked about how the uh, it gets tighter up by fourth and that's a good observation. And that's something that the boulevard space is something that we could be flexible with. And so an opportunity if, if needed is to, to bring that trail right up to the curb, you know, and get rid of that bu the boulevard space. So we've got some flexibility in terms of how narrow we can actually get our kind of full section. If okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, can I, can I continue with my questions or is that? Yes. Okay. Course. My next question um, is there's a lot of mature trees along that area so it sounds like you're gonna kind of try and work with what's already there and not really get into this space at all um but if you were cutting down like depending on as you continue exploring this um if you were cutting down a lot of the trees would you look at like replacing trees in the berm area or the grass boulevard or i can take that question and mm -hmm. uh yes so 
like we mentioned, we'll try and keep our impacts as little as possible. It's not Ramsey County's policy to you know, go hack and slash and we'll uh, we try to keep our impacts to a minimum. And um, as mentioned in the presentation, we are working with the Vadness Lake area um, organization and the Birch Lake Improvement Area, um, the ones that were responsible for putting the um, stormwater treatment facility up in the 4th Street intersection. And so we're not looking at redoing that or taking any more impacts than necessary. We mm -hmm. understand that Birch Lake is one of the cleaner lakes in the state and that we'd like to keep it that way. And so if there were any mature tree removals that were necessary, um, we'd certainly be looking at how we can design around having to take that tree removal. And if we did encounter something that was unavoidable, then we would look at steps on how we can um, mediate that. But it is something that will get more flushed out as we go through our final design process uh, mm -hmm. more than the concept level. Okay, perfect. And you you guys might have discussed some of this, so this might be kind of repetitive. I joined maybe like 10 or 15 minutes late, so I'm my apologies if I... No, nope, no worries. But um, okay, let's see here. Um, oh, and then I think my husband was saying it's like, um, what is that street? I think it's called not Fourth Street, but the other direction that uh, cul-de-sac that's um, behind uh, the gas station that Birch Lake Boulevard South. Yep. I think that sidewalk over there is um, six feet. So I think George had said that he had heard maybe 10 feet for the mixed use trail. So he was curious about like kind of, you know, uh, the continuation of just making that like a seamless, let's make it the same size kind of thing. And then also, I think he said something about how in White Bear, there's a rule about like riding bikes on sidewalks or something. So if it's a mixed use trail, is there like a designated bike space or something? I don't know. Again, these aren't my questions. So I'm just trying to be a good messenger. Hey, no worries. You're doing great. And um, yes, so not fam not familiar with the rulings from the city council on bike use on sidewalks but to be sure the the typical sidewalk width is five feet maybe six feet wide for a concrete sidewalk but when you get into a multi-use trail then that's where you see the larger uh 10 foot area and or 10 foot width um, and that requirement is for you know bikes being able to pass pedestrians on the same you know at the same time and so um, that's why we would be looking into the 10 foot width where uh -huh. it is um, but where things like the proximity to the lake come in there is room to notch that down but you don't want to um, go too narrow when you're looking to have a higher traffic bike area mm -hmm. alongside mm -hmm. your pedestrians mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, um, just a couple more questions from him. Um, can the speed limit be reduced at all on this road? Because people just go nuts around here. Um, like our neighbor's dog was just killed, uh, bus hit it um, like a couple of months ago. Um, and could that, or like, could there be stop signs added, trying to prevent semi truck traffic, something to make it like feel a little less like you're walking on the side of 35E? <laughs> Right. Well, I'm certainly sorry to hear that. And these are these are great questions. I will say that the typical or shall I say the existing section that's out there for widths has a 12 foot wide travel lane. And part of our design is to add in 11 foot travel lanes. And so there are studies that have been done that show that if you're even narrowing the width of the travel lane down from 12 feet to 11 feet, that it's been shown to reduce the miles per hour of the average traffic by four miles per hour. Oh. And on top of that, um, adding a trail or you know walk facility alongside of your roadway it gives the driver perception that there are pedestrians that are walking around and i need to be careful and have also shown to slow um, traffic compared to um, when you don't have a dedicated pedestrian um, route on either side then the traffic thinks that they're the only ones there and so what's to stop me from speeding so there are 
instance, there are those features that are being brought into the design and then certainly some increased um, uh, focus at Birch Lake, the Birch Lake intersection, and the 4th Street intersection to get some um, new uh, pedestrian facilities put in in terms of crossings. Mm -hmm. OK, yes, if that answers your question. That does. Yeah. I, and it would be nice too if there was like a bike crossing or something with like flashing lights or so, something to like show like people can regularly be crossing here. Keep on your toe or stay on your toes. Like right, right in front of our house. If you wanted to put something out for my kids, you could totally do that. That is fine. <laughs> I'll give you my address. Um, okay. And then it sounds like you guys are working with the Venice Heights group for the water runoff. Okay. And then the one other question he has on here is about bus stops. Um, so he's, there is a stop somewhere along this road and it says um, there's no bench or trash can at that bus stop. I know we get like cigarette butts in front of our house all the time. And I'm, I mean, it could just be people who are driving by and throwing them in front of our house, but also I wonder if some of it has to do with the bus stop. Um, do you guys have any plans to kind of make that a more stoppable stop? Um, let me answer this question and then move on to some of the other questions that we seem to be getting in the chat. Yeah, but, that's my last one. Um, I will no longer dominate the conversation. <laughs> no worries. But yes, we do see that um, the bus stop near 4th Street in that location and that um, part of our improvements are going to be to add a true landing area to that bus stop, uh, giving a concrete area for people to get on and off the bus that's going to make it more dedicated. Um, but in terms of the litter pick up alongside of it. I'm not sure where that falls in terms of responsibility. Um, and I would have to look into that more for you. Sorry, was there another part to that question? Or will that suffice for now? No, I think that's good for now. This is being recorded, right? Correct. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no, I think that's it for now. If he's got follow up, so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to go into the chat and look at Ted and Deb Vernon's question. Uh, can bike be on one side and walk be on the lake side? Uh, that's a good question. It's something that we considered as part of this project, but the problem that you run into in that regard is that now you're adding the width on one side for the walk and the width on one side for the bike trail. And that's it, particularly when you get closer to Fourth Street, when the lake starts encroaching more on the road, you really come into some problems with being too wide and impacting the lake. And outside of the lake, um, there are some areas on the home side where there's currently a retaining wall, and we would like to avoid having those substantial grading impacts, putting in new retaining walls or tying back the slopes of the proposed roadway um, deeper into the um, into the houses. So it is something that we looked at, but uh, we haven't found that that would be a favorable option compared to a multi-use trail on either on either side. And I can pass it back to Nikki to answer our next question if there were if there were any i think i think that's everything that i'm seeing in the chat there's there's um, one other question here about i think um homeowners if there's a cost to them so i'm i'm thinking that's like a, if the city's going to assess for any of this work alan i don't know if you can answer that i can speak to that the county is not looking to assess any of the work here, but I uh, might want to throw that question over to Paul Cappy if he's still on and yeah. if you were able to unmute him. Am I unmuted? Yes, yep, we can hear you. OK, you can hear me. This is Paul with the city of White Bear Lake, the city engineer. Um, as far as our um, any project project cost goes as far as the city, uh, we would not at this time be proposing to assess anything. Um, although we're not far enough into the project, if there were any um, uh, 
sewer water improvements. Um, not sure how far back we need to go on Fourth Street or uh, things like that where it could trigger something, but at least along Otter Lake Boulevard, we don't anticipate doing anything at this time. Um, that could change as project development goes though, but at this time we don't uh, propose anything. Thank you, Paul. That's all I'm seeing. Um, I don't know, Adrian, if you're seeing anything else. No, the, I am seeing what you are seeing. I don't, I don't see any more risk. Any more questions for now? Also, feel free to use the raise your hand um, option there next to the chat box option to uh, let us unmute you if you wanted to ask your questions outside of the chat. Uh, so like I said, I think I'll just reiterate, you know, we did record this, so we will put it on the website. So um, Vanessa, you can have your husband watch and, and get his questions answered in real time um, so you don't have to take notes and repeat. Um, otherwise, everyone else, again, the, the website's up. Uh, this will be on there. There's an opportunity to provide comments um, there as well. So if you think of something here after the meeting that you want to share, um, please do so um, on the website. and. Like I said, unless there's anything else, I don't know, Alan, if you want to. No, just I believe that my email and contact information was on the flyers. If you had any other questions you want to call, uh, leave a voicemail. I certainly get back to you and. Yeah, be checking the website for further updates and otherwise we will look to see everybody in June. Hey, thank thank you everybody for tuning in. We appreciate your feedback.